All right, so I'm going to film how I introduce dogs to prong collar. It's real easy. This is an important thing for, for dog owners to know, to understand, because um, no one uses them, right? And this is why they're going to get banned, you know? So usually week two, I introduce them to the pinch. We're a little bit behind. He's a baby, too, so I probably take it easy on But uh, anyway, you want to orient them to the pressure slowly, okay? Gradually introduce it and you always want to start on a um, star mark week one no matter how big and bad the dog draw on a star mark pretty much the entire week sometimes maybe day four or five if it's a badass dog i'll do this drill with but anyway you want to use this correctly one thing i see a lot of here big guy um unlike learbird recommends this and i don't understand why such a squirmy little fucker all right, so let me see if I can even, I may have to do a separate video with another dog with this. But, all right, so there's this ring right here, the floating ring. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. Boy. Let's see if we can get this up squirmy for a second. Yeah. Squirmy mermy. I know, I know. Okay. All right, see this ring? They recommend keeping it at like 12 o'clock right here. Now look at where the teeth are. They're on his, on his uh, windpipe. It's no good, man. You don't want to put tracheal pressure on a dog like that. I like to keep them fairly high and tight if I can. You know, this is this is just about right. It's a little tight. No, that's perfect actually. If you keep it up nice and high in the neck, right? And then I like to keep this between three and five. That floating ring, okay? There's a dead ring you can connect it to too. It makes it a little bit sharper. I'm not gonna get into that right now. Oh, Jesus, buddy. So pet owners, stop. I don't think what Learbird's putting out there is right. A lot of dog trainers do the same thing. So you think it, I think it's just because the pressure, it gets applied a little bit um, easier, or it's a little bit more precise when you just pull straight up, right? And it kind of moves the, the uh, collar around, just readjust it. Keep it off their fucking necks, it's crazy. I don't know why they do that. <clears throat> I'm gonna stop talking about it before I start bitching. Cause they, I, I like what's his face, the Learbird guy. Uh, what's his name again? Michael Ellis. I love Michael Ellis. It's, it's a lot of that company you know, pisses me off. They have like internet acolytes. I think they're like positive only people. All right, here we go. So, look, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna kind of. You can do this with food. If he looks stressed, I will. I'll reward him. But generally speaking, I I, I kind of don't. And what I do is I just kind of. Light and gentle, okay. Yeah, and he moves one way, I move the other. But I'm not talking him with a fucking leash, man. Like, good, that's it. I'm just teaching him to follow the leash and to follow pressure and kind of get to it. Please. So he's going forward. Hey, good. So I'll back up. Good boy. Very good. You can use a wall too. Right, right here. Everybody off. He's probably not going to do a nice jump. Come here, Hansen. Right here, buddy. No, 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 no. Sit. <laughs> ben. Ben. Sit. Good boy. Then I'm going to back up and I'm going to go heel. Good boy. You can combine that with a tree. Good boy. See? Good. Good. That's good. Okay, this is slight negative reinforcement again. Um, and that's how we're, we're teaching them to turn off that mild, kind of annoying tingling. Just follow, follow the leash. Move with me. It's the only message we're telling them. And they get these pinch collars. Like the e collar, you got to really uh, educate them about what's going on because that's a totally inorganic sensation. This isn't. I, I'm telling you, in all my time doing this, I find that they all get this collar. The main point of it is just sharper communication, less movement when you correct. Uh, it's great for dogs that forage if you apply it correctly. And it's just, it's you get less with more with these guys, okay? And it's good to have one. I like using them for a period and then usually they come off. Uh, but not always, and I don't particularly care. Like, some dogs are just strong, strong willed, they're the pain insensitive, they don't care, you know. Dewey's a good example of that. So to motivate them on the negative end, they need a little something extra. It's 
not typical, but it's not super rare either. Um, but people too fixate on the tools. What you want to get is a happy dog. It's listening and do what you need. Who's not super stressed by the whole thing. The application of the tools matters, right? Good boy. Good boy. So I'll throw up a couple of uh, thank yous here, all right? Actually, we'll do some, do some talk, right? You like the game. Yes! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Apply the pressure automatically. Right? You. Yes. Yes. Look at that. Yeah. Ooh. Instructionally, you should see this is a little eight month old whippet. He's got a pinch on, it's not a big deal. Okay, he's having a good time. You know, but too many pet owners are putting this shit all over their larynx and trachea and uh, pulling on them. You know, I do like light, gentle Ouija pumps, except for the special dog that maybe gets a little something extra, but you know, and in the beginning, man, get them used to it gradually. You don't start yanking on it. Not, I mean, it's going to induce panic, you know. Um, but he's not taking it personally. He's having a good time, so that much should be evident. But that's the first time he's felt this, and he's good. 